Hazreti Tahire Tevla Duresü'l Esam bizim efendilerimizin sayıda niyaz zemme Resulü Fiyan Hazretin Erbaş Şeriflerine Pirimiz Bilal Abeş Radiyallahu Anh Efendimizin Şeyhimiz Sahibül Sevş Yapdül Kerim El Kıbrıs El Rabbani Hazretlerinin ve her husus bu caminin vanisi ve bir güne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş İmam Mezzin kaymalarının ve kahve ehli imanın ervahi için Allah rızası için El Fatiha Yavuzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim İnnallâhe ve melâiketâ insanun âlen nebi Ya eyvellezine amin usallu aleyhi ve sellim o teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala ali seyyidina Muhammed Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Nehmedullah ta'ala ve nesafri ve şerven la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Ve şerü enne seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zivacihi ve sahbihi tabi hulefe raşidin mahadin min ba'di. Ve zemme ta'ala tahkik. Kuzun min fa'lemeti hulefe resulü ala tahkik. Umer el-Mu'minin. Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar, Osman ve Ali ve Allah Bakr, Sabit, Tabi'in, Rıdhanallahu Ta'ala aleyhim ecma'in. Ya eyyuhal mu'minul hazirun, etekullahu Ta'ala, ve te inna Allah hamel lezine tekvel lezine hum muhsinun. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrafil enbiya ve mursalin. Seyyidina Mevlana Muhammedin ve la alihi ve sahibi ecma'in. All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the universes. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All that is in the heavens, and all that is in the earth glorifies Allah. And to him belongs the kingdom, and to him belongs all praise, and he is able to do all things. It is he who created you, but one of you is a disbeliever, and one of you is a believer. And Allah is the seer of what you do. He created the heavens and the earth with truth, and he shaped you and made good your shapes, and unto him is the journeying. He knows all that is in the heavens and the earth, and he knows what you hide and what you declare. And Allah is aware of what is in the chests of men. Sadaqallah al-Azim. May all peace and blessings be upon the Sultan of the Messengers, the Imam of the Prophets, the leader of the righteous, the master of the children of Adam, the intercessor of the Day of Judgment, Sayyidina Muhammad And may peace and blessings be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Omar Farooq, Hazrat Osman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya ayyuhal mu'minun, O believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to know him and to worship him. The journeying is to Him. Every day we have to check ourselves to see if this is the reason that we are living. As our Shaykh Sahib al Sayyid, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibri, Siya Rabbani, Qadazullah Sir, is saying, Sit down in your room and say, There's nobody here. Say it. Say to yourself, There's nobody here now. Shut down your phone. Shut down everything. Shut yourself off from this world and say to yourself, Oh, my ego. There's nobody around, nobody is around except you and Allah 
watching. Don't lie to me now. What is your reason of life? What is the purpose? Why are you living? You will find out. You will understand. You will understand how good you are that time. So stop fooling yourselves. This great friend of Allah is teaching us sincerity. Sincerity, it is to be real. Sincerity is to examine ourselves and to say, I am falling short. Sincerity is to know our ego, because without knowing our ego, we cannot know our Lord. Sincerity brings out the reality of ourselves. Sincerity is what makes a man to live for Allah. That is why Hazrat Umar al-Faruq radiallahu an is saying, whoever purifies his intention, whoever purifies his intention, then Allah will take care of his affairs between people. And whoever shows off to people something that Allah knows is not in that person's heart, then Allah will disgrace that person. And Hazrat Ibn Mu'az radiallahu an said, Sincerity distinguishes good deeds from sins, just as milk is distinguished from filth and blood. Sincerity, ikhlas, it brings a person's reality out. This is why today the world is distracting us from being sincere distracting us just to sit quiet and to think and to understand ourselves. Because when we are distracted, we don't examine ourselves. And when we don't examine ourselves, when we don't make that tafakkur, we can keep fooling other people. And we end up convincing ourselves and fooling ourselves. Our phones, our computers, all of our smart gadgets, making us to become more stupid to ourselves. They are all there to distract us from looking at ourselves, looking at our intention, looking to see if we are sincere or not. And because we don't examine our sincerity, very easily, easy, we are able to live through this life, fooling ourselves into thinking that we are living good. When in fact, we pass through life heedlessly, like animals or worse, like robots. Even if we are not looking at our hearts and checking our hearts, our Lord is checking. Holy Prophet is saying, Allah does not look at your outward form, nor at your riches, but He looks at your hearts and your deeds. And He's saying in the Hadith Sharif, والسلام, actions are according to intentions. And every man shall have only that which he intended. Therefore, he whose hijrah was for Allah and his messenger, then his hijrah will be counted for Allah and his messenger. And he whose hijrah was for some worldly benefit or to get married, his hijrah was for the reason that made him migrate. We should understand this hadith a little bit more. A man may do the best actions. He may make hijrah, emigration from Mecca to Medina, following the Holy Prophet ﷺ, leaving everything behind. But if his intention was not for Allah and his Prophet, then that action will not be written as being for the sake of Allah. We must constantly be cleaning, cleaning and purifying our intention look at our intention, study our intention, see is this intention correct? Is this still holding? This is why Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu an gave advice saying to his son, Oh my son, have a good intention. You will always be good as long as you intend good. Today's people have no intentions. They wake up with no intentions. They go through life with no intentions. They live and they die with no intentions, except to please their desires and their ego. Muslims are following this. Believers are following this. Imam Ahmad, Imam Al-Ghazali Sir is mentioning a hadith al Qudsi, saying, the servant performs good deeds. 
which the angels take up. They bring it up on sealed scrolls. These are put in front of Allah who says, take this scroll away. Because what is in it was not intended for my sake. And with that he calls on the angels and say, write for this servant deeds that he did not actually perform. And the angels will say, our Lord, he didn't do any of those things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reply, but he intended them. Sultan al Awliya, Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim, Adil Haqqani, Qadaz Nasir, is saying the general rule in Islam is innamal a'malu bin niyat. Actions are according to intentions. And on the day of judgment, Allah Almighty will measure our value not according to our deeds, but according to our intentions. He will give us paradise and rewards. The deeds we do are so little. Whereas our intentions, the more we increase our intentions, the better it is. Allah Almighty is not putting a limit by saying, make only this much intention and don't intend more than this. No. What He will grant us on the day of judgment will not be according to our deeds, but according to our intentions. Therefore, you see a servant doing some small, insignificant service. However, his intention is big. It will be enormous size on the day of judgment. Allah Almighty will reward with such a reward that they will be astonished. They'll say, Ya Rabbi, I didn't do this. What I did is so little. What you gave is so big. O my servant, Allah will say, your intention was big. Your deed was small, but your intention was big. Therefore, make intention without a limit. Think what you can do. What can you do to make Allah pleased? Yes. Therefore, I want to work hard for Allah and to finish unbelief completely. Fatih Sultan Mehmet Khan said, he said the same thing. Sultan Fatih Mehmet, who came with a virtue of cleaning the world from unbelief, from one end to another end. And I want, Ya Rabbi, Give me a chance to save this world from the dirt of unbelief. To clean it. To declare Tawhid to the whole world. This is my intention. Your intention should be so too. Building a factory, gathering dunya is not a purpose. This is the purpose. What is the intention of the believer? To clean out the dirt of unbelief. To clean the world. This is the intention. O oh, believers, that chance to make a big intention, it is in front of us. We are following the grandson of Fatih Sultan, the Khalifa Shaykh Maulana. We are following Sahib al Saif. We can never forget his great intentions. He is saying, We, as Osman al Naqshbandis, especially in this part of the world and on top of this mountain, we have another thing to be thankful to our Lord. Don't forget that in this part of the world, there was not a single man saying Allah. Alhamdulillah, with the help, guidance and blessing of our Shaykh, we built a masjid here. In a few years' time, people are coming here from different parts of the world. We didn't give invitation to anyone. Something is happening, meaning Allah is bringing them here. You all came here from different parts of the world. You are all here. We are sitting here. We are intending to make a masjid here that will go on continuously until Judgment Day. Inshallah, for the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be continuously remembered and for five times azan to be called from the top of this mountain. That is bringing another opening to my heart. There was a time once when the Holy Prophet ﷺ was old and tired and he was coming from a war. All his clothes were in dust. He entered into his masjid and he prayed two rakats. He seemed very tired. He was getting old. Hazrat Fatima radiallahu an ran to him and said, O oh my father, when is this suffering that you are going through going to end? He said, O oh Fatima, do you see that sun? She said, Yes, my father. He said, The light of Islam is like that sun. 
if it's not entering into every house in this world, then my suffering is not going to end. And he said, I'm not going to live that long, but I'm going to have inheritors living in this world. They are going to carry this message to different parts of the world, and they are going to bring Islam to different houses in this world. So be happy. We should be happy. Every one of you and every one of those people who are doing this kind of work should be happy. That is a message given through Holy Prophet I'm saying it is going to be those ones bringing that message to every house in this universe. It is our aim, inshallah, that from every house at least one person should become Muslim, inshallah. From each house one person should accept Islam, inshallah, Rahman. Check to see if our intention is the same as the one that we call the Murshid, that our guide. Check to see if we have lived according to that. That's one of Shaykh Fendi's intentions. And the opportunity is given to us to continue with that. The opportunity is given to us to also run to bring the light of Islam all over the world. But we have to ask ourselves sincerely, what are we doing to be part of that work? What are we doing to further that intention? We have to ask ourselves as the Murids, have always asked themselves, what did you do for Allah's sake today? If we work, if we worry, if we worry for the work of Allah, we're going to have no other worries. If we run to make Allah happy, we will find no sadness in our lives. Shaykh Maulana is saying, whoever's heart is with Islam, how happy is the one who struggles for Islam. Allah won't give other troubles to him. Allah won't trouble anyone who's busy with Islam. He won't bother them with troubles of dunya. No. Dunya will be like a tame dog, wagging his tail and following them. He won't have troubles. Whoever's not worried about anything but Islam, Allah won't give him any trouble. He won't give either to his body or his children, either to his wife or his parents, either to his work or his neighbors, either to his farm or his animals, either to his agriculture or his trade. Whoever's busy with Allah, whoever's busy with Islam, Allah won't give him other worries. Pay attention to it. Oh believers, the holy months, they're about to enter. We should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He's going to give us another chance to run back to Him, to fix our intention to Him, to make our sincerity to Him. We should take the advice of our Shaykh and apply it to our lives. Put aside our stubbornness, in our arrogance, in our anger, in our jealousy. Put aside all these evil characteristics outside. We should make an intention to live for Allah, to live for our Prophet to live for our shaykh, to live for Islam. We should make an intention to fight our egos. We should make the intention to be in service to those who are doing the work of Allah. We should make an intention to be a jamaat that is pleasing in the sight of Allah. We should run after the words of our shaykh who is saying, the holy months are giving us the chance, the power to start having control over our ego. During these months, shaitan will be put into chains. You cannot complain about shaitan too. But the ego is planning so many tricks and traps. And if we're the servants of Allah, then we must leave ego and we must run to look anything that I'm doing. What is the benefit in it for me, for the nation? And is it okay by my Lord or not? Then inshallah, Rahman, we will find the safety. Gone. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Lazim, lazim. La ilaha illa wa lahi al-khaymatu bi la ilaha illa wa lahi al-khaymatu bi la ilaha illa wa lahi al-khaymatu bi la ilaha illa wa lahi al-khaymatu bi la ilaha illa wa lahi al-khaymatu bi la Subhan Kudusun Rabbin Arabin Marik. Subhan Kudusun Rabbin Arabin Marik. Subhan Kudusun Rabbin Arabin Marik. Yenatin Ayn Allah. Khamsalah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.